Assalamualaikum So first of all, Jazakumullah uh, Brother Jawed and Dr. Kia. Um, it was great, great presentation. Actually, I wanted to give you my minutes if you wanted. Uh, mashallah, you're going so fluently, mashallah. And the conclusion which he gave about the book, A Strange New World by Carl Truman. Um, I actually worked on that book, Alhamdulillah. I spoke with Carl Truman a few times. Um, and Alhamdulillah, with the Biznillah, last week, two weeks ago, I published my book on Islamic versus postmodern paradigm of sexuality, a Sharia compliant version of Carl Truman's book. Uh, <laughs> because he's coming from a far right perspective. Uh, there are a few things which uh, were extremely, extremely well researched, but at the same time, their epistemology and metaphysics are different. So I would highly recommend his book. And if you have time, you can read a book of Jahil person like me also, inshallah ta'ala. Um, anyway, um, talking about Carl Truman, um, a strange new world. Do you really think this world is strange? Yes. Yes. Covered with the postmodern Jahiliya. You know, I actually, I was saying this in the morning. This world is so strange and plastic, as Dr. G Kia was saying, that there was time when we were concerned about women not getting enough rights. You remember that time? 100 years ago in America, just Google, in 1920, women could not own anything. Women were not even allowed to vote. And 100 years later now, we don't even know what is a woman. <laughs> that is really a strange, weird, new, godless society. And that's exactly happened, what Dr. Kia was saying. When you remove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or from your morality, you remove divine guidance from your morality, then you will swing like pendulum from the extremes of masculinism, then the multiple waves of feminism, now to the red pill movement, from gender fluidity to gender wars, this entire chaos is a result of basically removing divine guidance from our social collective life. You know, I was, I was actually talking to someone, I was saying, subhanAllah, back in the days, this society has so strange, same thing about what Carl Truman argues, this has become so strange all of a sudden that almost a few decades ago, in the Western countries, homosexuality carried a social stigma in West. And now it's not only considered as a legitimate act, but rather part of my identity. It means I will morally justify it. And if I have to say simple facts in Islam, homosexuality is haram and prohibited, in certain segments of Western society, this is considered as a bigot hate speech. Why? Why does society have become so strange we are swinging like pendulum? You know, if I have to say this, that a marriage is a bond between a man and a woman in Islam, some people might think it's a dangerous, lunatic fringe argument. <laughs> Why? Things like simple have become so complicated. Again, because of our morality. It's just getting fluid and fluid from modernity now into the postmodernism. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us and our kids. Say ameen. You know, this is exactly what happened when you remove God from your social sciences, from your economics, from your politics, including your sexuality. Now Netflix, Hollywood, everything is talking about everything else except God. <laughs> so God is being removed. Everything they were going to talk about collective life is minus God. And this is exactly what West or how West wants to see Islam also. De facto Christianization, if I am allowed to use little heavy philosophical terms, secularization of Islam, individualization, privatization of Islam. Islam is only relevant in the masjid. But the moment you talk about, okay, Islam talks about etiquettes of using the restroom, but it also talks about running the society. What about the morality outside when you walk outside of the masjid? They don't want to see that. 
And this is where we have to talk about today that collective divine guidance is the need of the hour. And when we will present Islam as this, that Islam not only provides you an avenue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the individual level, but even it provides you all the solution of your problem, which we are struggling, whether in terms of sexuality, economics, social sciences, a concrete solution, then we can be confident in our da'wah, inshallah ta'ala. You know, subhanAllah, one of the other, other issues which happen in a, in a free society like this, or secular, a secular person might think that the best solution is to reduce religion into the four walls of worship, or four walls of houses of worship, because in the Western Europe, a few hundred, few hundred few, two, three centuries ago, they have seen multiple wars on the name of Christianity, where one group of Christianity, Catholicism, Protestant, Orthodox, they were fighting with each other. They know, you are kafir, you are kafir. And they were doing this, hashtag kafir. <laughs> and then millions of people lost their lives, and they both were using biblical verses, all the groups. The solution came that, okay, let's privatize religion, because we cannot bring Jesus outside of the church. It's too hard to handle. That's what they said. So let's privatize religion. Let's keep Jesus relevant to the church only. Do not learn anything what Jesus or biblical morality have to say from outside perspective. Then who will going to decide social laws? Who is going to decide economics and politics and sexuality? Well, we have godless philosophers for that. Who is going to use their reason to tell us what is good and what is bad for our social sciences? And we are fooled in the West that no, it's actually good that you are believing in the privatization of religion. Because we can enjoy the freedom. How many of you believe that we have absolute freedom? Can you raise hand? Okay, those of you who believe, my question to you is, can you drive your car 150 miles per hour in Baltimore? I know as a Muslim you can. Because you Muslims, you want to go to Jannah very quickly. Right? <laughs> but you cannot. Even if cop will pull you over, you cannot say, well, my car, my choice. Right? You can't say this. You can't say this. Because your freedom, you can have a registration says, Asif Hirani, I have a freedom. America was built on freedom. Get it. But your freedom is harmful for you or for others. So we need to restrict your freedom. So there is no absolute freedom. But who is going to decide that laws in social life, in sexuality, which will going to harm me or harm others? That's where the discussion is. We believe we are in desperate need of divine guidance because once you remove divine guidance, you will swing like pendulum as we are doing in the Western civilization. Allah, it's difficult to even think critically about the Western civilization for many reasons because we are obviously less than a person, less than one person in America. We have a defeatist mentality. We see the situation in the Muslim majority countries. Economically, they are struggling. And at the same time, materialistically, we see the growth. But see the spiritual decline of the West. And then you will be able to realize morality-wise, spiritual-wise, they are struggling. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to stand firm, inshallah, on deen so that we can offer them a solution, inshallah ta'ala. I will just going to speak about two things and I'll be ending inshallah just two things very quickly inshallah because I only have 20 minutes um, uh, I cannot take more uh, I got the reminder alhamdulillah first is few examples the problems what we are facing in the western countries in the western civilization actually in the globe right now after removing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after removing God as a as a source of morality in our collective life I'll give you a few examples for that and second, what can we do as a post-colonial Muslim living in the West? What options do we have to stay firm on this morality and to offer other what we have from, um, as a solution from their problems? Uh, because as a post-colonial Muslim, I want to bridge the gap of modernity as a, as a civilization, not as a philosophy, while preserving my faith, while preserving my tradition. And European precedent is making me anxious because while they were crossing the bridge of modernity, they lost their religion, Christianity. I don't want to do that. So inshallah, there are some, some, a few practical advice based on that. We just prayed Zohar and Asr, right? 
How many of you prayed Zohar and Asar? Raise your hand. Because if you're not raising your hand, go and pray Zohar and Asar. <laughs> okay. okay, those of you who prayed Zohar and Asar, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consistently, Ihdina siratal mustaqeem. You know what does it mean? Any translation? Guide me or guide us? Guide us, all of us, to a straight path. I was noticing this in Surah Fatiha. Allah did not say, Iyaka a'budu wa iyaka astain, ihdini sirat al mustaqim. That's not the style of Surah Fatiha. Surah Fatiha says, Iyaka na'budu. We worship you. Iyaka nasta'in. We seek your help. And then, ihdina sirat al mustaqim. We're not saying ihdini, we're saying ihdina. Guide us to a straight path. You know, subhanAllah, you will see this, this aspect of community and collectivism. That individually we need guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will ask me about my individual affairs first and foremost. Just FYI. But what about the collective life? The West is in desperate need in its civilization decline in terms of morality, in terms of sexuality, in terms of social sciences. That a divine guidance will come. A balanced guidance will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's where we are missing. So I will give you a few examples of what are the areas which are missing when you remove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala officially from the society and we are going to struggle from left to right. Let's take, start with the social sciences, social problem. Obviously we West have an adversarial lens when they are looking at religion because of the wars in Europe. So they want to use reason to find out the social rights and social sciences. Who will going to decide what are the rights of men and women? If you don't have God in the picture, divine guidance in the picture. If you ask women to decide the rights of men and women, guess what? They were going to make laws favoring women. If you will ask men, what are the rights of men and women? Guess what? They were going to make laws favoring men. We need a constant source of divine guidance where the creator of men, a creator of women can give us guidance. He can tell us when I need to restrict my freedom as a man and when I need to restrict my freedom as a woman in order to complement each other and to live in a healthy society without any bias. But obviously we cannot go back to religion because we see the religion from an adversarial lens in the West. And that's where the problem is. Now the problem is not even about the rights of men and women. Now the problem is who is a woman? Now the problem is not about the rights of human being. Now the problem is, who is one? Because we have removed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the guidance. Okay, remove social sciences. Come to sexuality and spirituality. In terms of sexuality and spirituality, who is right? Hedonism or monasticism? If you're not taking guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then who is going to decide what are the rights of my body and my soul in proportion? My body have certain desires, yes or no? Physical desires, sensual desires. And then I have to nourish my soul at the same time. Now in the West, where we have a problem with religion, allergy with religion. Either we will idolize bodily desires, hedonism, or we will going to demonize bodily desires, that's monasticism. Only in divine guidance, Islam will going to say, you have to, fulfill your you have to fulfill your bodily desires, whether physical or sensual, but in a divine context, in order to nourish your soul also, so that society can flourish. But in the West, they would see these bodily desires either as idle or as evil. Nothing is in between. And this usually happens when you remove the concept of divine guidance. Because Islam will say, those sensual desires are aspect of are basically your ibadah if that comes from a divine within the divine guidance with your spouse we know the hadith that prophet muhammad SAW regarded that relationship as an act of sadaqah and charity because islam see those things in a different way if it comes in a proper direction moving forward political problem who's going to decide rights between the government and the people if you remove the divine guidance. We live in a capitalist democracy right now. We hated monarchy. 
We hated communism, but now the question, now the question comes, are we conservatives or liberals? How do we decide conflicts? How do we going to decide about the gun laws and abortion rights? Are we seeking truth or are we seeking groupism? Furthermore, who will determine whether we should permit gender reassignment surgeries for children, as Dr. Kia was saying, under the age of 18 without the consent of the parents? Now, this is a political issue because everything is political. Everything is groupism. Are you from left? You have to say yes. Are you from the right? You have to say no. No morality, no truth, because everything is subjective in postmodern world. We have, said, we have said no to divine guidance. And this is what happened when you remove God, even from the basic ethics of the politics. Instead of seeking truth, everything has become politicized. Economical problem. Economical problem. Who will decide rights between the employee and employer if you remove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We tried in the West monarchy, feudalism, capitalism, nothing worked. In monarchy and feudalism, minimum wage workers, aka farmers, were exploited by the investors. Now we have this capitalism where, again, minimum wage workers are being exploited by the one person who are sitting in New York, Wall Street, who are making laws. So basically, how do you bring a real equality in financial sense? Without divine guidance. And one more thing what Dr. Kia was saying, that in, in terms of ethics and morality, who will going to decide what is right and what is wrong if you remove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who? In the West, they have tried multiple philosophies. If you want to just Google categorical ethics, deontological argument, duty-based consequence teleological argument, Kant came with his theory, everything seems like an extreme virgin. And then they responded to one extreme from the other extreme. That's a Western problem. Who will going to decide if you remove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is right and what is wrong? That's where Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim comes. When we are saying, guide us to a straight path, we are saying in every aspect of life, guide, guide us to the straight path. Now, what are the solutions, inshallah, before we can end? I would say three to four points as a solution. Um, for details, you can read my book again, Islam versus Postmodern Paradigm of Sexuality. I will just give you four points, inshallah. And these are not the ultimate solution. This is just my reflection. You can disagree. Um, and you can, inshallah, talk to me and tell me what do you think about this, inshallah. First, what is the solution for us? The first solution is that we have to try to find moderate voices in our Muslim discourse. It's very easy for us to respond to one extreme from the other extreme. This is a problem of West. It's very easy to respond to one jahiliya with other jahiliya. Either you have Trevor Noah or Jordan Peterson. We don't have anything in middle. Have you seen that? Oh, you are fed up from liberalism. You are fed up from feminism. Okay, then you start listening to that audience. You are fed up from the red pill movement. Then you start listening to them. Where are moderate voices? Moderate voices, not modernist voices, moderate voices are being muted because of the blatant screaming of the left and right. And that's where we need to give forum to the moderate voices. Second problem, or so second solution of the problem. Second solution. If you ask any person who is working in a managerial position, that what is the first stage of problem solving? They will say first stage is to recognize that there is one, right? Recognize that we are living in a very strange times, as Dr. Kia mentioned. And we need to, we need to educate ourselves as parents. If you think reactive parenting will work at these days, wallahi, it won't. You need to be proactive as a parent. You need to be proactive as a parent. I'm not saying use graphic language, but at least bring these arguments. When you are teaching them Lut Ali Salam story, bring these arguments of the modern day uh, homosexuals. When you are thinking about or reading about to them Yusuf Ali Salam story, teach to them Zina versus Nikah. In a non graphic language, obviously age appropriate language, but you need to be proactive as a parent because, you know, subhanAllah, one of my friends says that it's easy to be a parent, but it's difficult to parent a child. <laughs> Wallahi, is that so true? And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to become uh, good parents, inshallah ta'ala. Educate yourself. I have a YouTube series where I was teaching my kids gender interaction, zina versus nikah, 
and why homosexuality is haram in their language. They were 8 and 10 back in the days. You can find that. And further, for the parents who educate themselves, you can read my book. Uh, that is actually written for the intention of educating parents also, inshallah ta'ala. Lectures, khutbas. Um, I know that Sheikh Yasser Qadi gave actually a beautiful khutbah two, three weeks ago in his masjid, epic masjid. So you can take benefit from these, inshallah ta'ala. Educate yourself. By the way, Ik and I have done a fabulous job. Wallahi, to arrange a conference on this topic and to speak and to ask these speakers to speak about these topics, they deserve a big round of applause. Can we give them a big round of applause to Ik and I? Wallahi, we have a very high, oh, high hope and optimism with Ikna that you are a traditional mainstream American organization for Muslims who represent inside of flavors of Islam the mainstream ummah. And I hope that inshallah we can continue and we all can continue to represent inshallah Ikna in our different chapters inshallah ta'ala. Um, last two things inshallah before we can end. Last, oh, you are here. Like a malakul maut. Ka'annahu yawm al qiyamah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I know him. He, he won't offend. Okay. How much I have? 30 seconds? Okay. I'll just mention la last two things, inshallah. Just give me one minute. Akhi, just give me one minute. Ittaqillah. Be more generous. Okay. Do not... F okay, for, uh, last two solutions, I'll, I'll be done, inshallah. Do not fix a square pegs in circle hole. That's one of the mistakes. We, with sometimes defeatist mentality, we were going to fix a square pegs and circle hole. Even if you ask a two-year-old toddler, can you fix a square pegs and circle hole? He will say no. Do not try to reinterpret the Quran and Sunnah to make it fit into the secular paradigm. That won't work. Don't try to say, oh, homosexuality is halal. We need to go back and reinterpret the ayat and the hadith. No. That's not happening. That's not happening. I know as a postmodernist, you believe in structuralism, you can do everything. But do not... Fix the square pegs and circle hole. And the last thing, inshallah, before I can end, is instead of lectures and conferences and books and speeches, we have to become a movement. This is the last thing I wanted to request. And I know that, subhanAllah, two weeks ago, me and Sheikh Yasser Qadi were discussing this, subhanAllah, um, that we need to become a movement instead of just the lectures. Lectures, individual, alhamdulillah, will help. Books will help, but they will be slow process. We need to become a movement. We need to become a movement. We will have multiple speakers, multiple researchers, multiple authors, influencers, bloggers, policy makers working at the same time. The impact will be bigger because this requires all of our attention. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us under the divine guidance. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.